Thank you for your kind introduction. I greet you in the name of the Masikela family, San Bonan. I greet you in the name of all those that have laid their lives down in the struggles um, in order to get us to where we are today, San Bonan. And lastly, I greet you in the name of Africa, San Bonan. I'm deeply honored to be here at the number 43 annual legacy event on behalf of the Masikela family to accept the Magogo Award bestowed on our late father, grandfather, uncle, friend, jazz giant, bull elephant of our clan, and the great crocodile of the Limbopo and Maloko River. I'd like to begin by acknowledging from both the royal, uh, royal family of Eswatini as well as the Republic of South Africa. All excellencies, ministers, speakers, and all distinguished guests. And more importantly, the Mas Masilela family for sharing this great heritage event with us tonight. My name is Selema Makhoti Masikela, son of Barbara Masikela and Henry Squire Makhoti. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. Amen. I'm also the nephew of Huma Sekela. The recent loss of struggle stalwart former High Commissioner, Ambassador, and Chief of State of Protocol, Billy Mudise, has struck a painful blow to the family. And in his honor, my Uncle Hugh and all our elders that have passed this year, I'd like to take time for a moment of silence. Their souls rest in peace. Hambaga Shen Kont, Robala Kaho Zumukoyan. As we have been close to the Mudises for many years and have supported each other through our losses as a family, both my mother and my cousin, and Uncle Hugh's daughter, Pula Masikela, have been unable to make it today. As a child born in exile to parents that were at the forefront of the struggle, the story of number 43 as the nerve center for the operations of Nkoto Wesizwe in Swaziland touches home. And as we gradually lose our elders, we lose parts of that history. And as it is said, every time an elder dies, a library burns to the ground. Today, perhaps I can share a page out of a book in that library that was my uncle Hugh. He was a man of action as much as he was a man driven by destiny. After the Sharpeville massacre in 1969, uh, in 1960, where 69 protesters were shot dead, the apartheid government banned gatherings of 10 people or more. This was when he resolved to leave the country and fight for the voice of our people with his strongest weapon, his trumpet. He traveled to the United States, but spent many of his 25 years of exile in African countries such as the Congo, Botswana, Liberia, and Ghana. His life vision was the upliftment of African culture through music, arts, dance, fashion, film, and other forms of expression. And in the classic saying, Maibuwe Afrika. His involvement in young Swazi musician Bujona's single, Journey to the Kitchen, which tells the story of number 43, is a perfect example of the passion he had for telling Africa's heritage. Whether lamenting the imprisonment of our leaders with the song, Bring Him Back Home, or empathizing with the mine workers of Southern Africa in Stimela, 
Yuma Sikela's dedication to the African project was tireless. As you may know, uh, our uncle was a great storyteller, and I'd like to share a story with you. I remember him telling me about his grandmother, Johanna Mabena, my great-grandmother. She was born in the late 1800s, and she lived well over the age of 103. Over the years, while he was in exile, they would communicate by letter, and later by phone. And she would ask, Minky, how are you making a living out there? He would tell her that he was still paying the, playing the trumpet and that he was making a decent living. She would always respond and say, I'm glad things are going well for you, Minky. But at some point, you need to think about getting a real job. <laughs> Fast forward to 1990, and the Masikalas in exile returned to South Africa. Coming home was, a, was momentous because Uncle Hugh had spent 30 years away from his family, and the fact that his grandmother was still alive uh, was cathartic. In 1992, he led the Sekunjalo homecoming concert where many other music legends and exiled returnees performed in solidarity. He brought my 100 and something year old great grandmother to come and witness this homecoming concert. The concert was a resounding success, and at the end of the night, he asked Oma, Oma, what did you think of the concert? Finally, you get a chance to see me work. She said, Minky, that was mind-blowing, and I'm proud of you, my sin. Now, don't you think it's time you got a real job? <laughs> but what he found was much more than a job. He found his purpose. And so this next section is titled, 10 Lessons I Learned from Uncle Hugh. This is dedicated to everybody in the room, and particularly the young people in the room. Here was a man who led by example, and the following 10 are lessons we can all apply in our lives. Find and live your purpose, because your uniqueness is a joy to the world. Help others find and live their purpose, because the world is a better place when good things grow. Keep practicing to be the best, because the greatness that we see is in the hard work, sacrifice, and dedication that we do not see. Be open to new things, because curiosity and imagination make us children again. Keep moving, because there's more greatness coming in your future. Keep smiling, because it's infectious and it makes others smile too. Take a chance on love. Always smell good because, because. <laughs> Never forget where you come from. And uh, lastly, always keep the music playing. I'd like to share a last story with you that was told to me by author and struggle stalwart Wali Mongani Seroti shortly after the passing of my uncle. In 1977, Wali and fellow artist and activist formed the Medu Arts Ensemble in exile in Botswana. Author Mandalanga, the late poet Kiorapeze Khositsile, and Bob Jonas Kwangwa were just some of the prestigious names that were part of this organization. Yuma Sikela was also invited, and him being overly adventurous and daring, of course, wanted to be a part of it. The story goes that they had set up camp in the middle of the bushes so as not to be noticed by the apartheid armed forces. After some days, Brahim came to Prawili and said, look, man, uh, we're going to need to find a way to record for us musicians. Wali looked back at him with shock, wondering how it would ever be possible that they record music in the bushes. Prawali says that Hugh disappeared for a day or two and came back with full equipment to build a studio. He proceeded to build the studio and when it was done, Wali asked, so what do you call this? And Prahu replied, Techno Bush. <laughs> <laughs> he ended up recording an album there and he did release in 1984 and that was actually titled Techno Bush. Let us never forget the legacies of our heroes, from the Magogos and the Huma Sikelas to the Miriam Makebas and the Billy Mutises. Thank you, the Masilela family, for sharing this event of heritage with us. 
and more importantly, with the children of tomorrow. May you enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.